Hello everyone and welcome to part one of Boulder Canyon. Boulder Canyon is a brand new start. I introduce uh, new products, uh, new brushes, and a new way of starting a painting. So uh, there's a lot going on on this one and I'm really excited to bring you some new ideas. So if you've been following me for the last 140 uh, sessions, you're now ready to move on to another, um, you know, a little bit more step up here with uh, products and your approach. So it's new, don't have to do it, but uh, I think if you'd give it a try, I think you might, uh, might enjoy it. You can still use your old products to do this painting and uh, either way you want to go, it's up to you. All right, so with that, let's get to today's painting. Hello and welcome. I'm George Call to part one of a three or four part series. I'm not quite sure. Anytime I start these, I'm not quite sure if it's going to, how long it's going to take, but usually it takes three to get these done, sometimes four. The name of today's painting, this series, is Boulder Canyon. And we're starting out with a um, new cadre of colors. So we're going to go through here and take a look at all these nice colors. I've got my cool warms and some of my browns over here. So I guess the first thing to understand is I'm going to be using a um, Gamsol um, thinner today. It, uh, it's pretty good and it, it dries pretty quickly and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Of course, I have titanium white. I'll put that over here to the side. And uh, ultra blue. Uh, I think we have a cobalt here. And then alizarin. This is a cad red. Permanent orange. Hansa yellow deep. Hansa yellow medium. And then this brismuth uh, yellow. Man, is it light. It's really quite a standout yellow. One of the old standbys, transparent oxide red. And here's a new one, uh, Transparent Oxide Brown. And uh, last but not least is uh, Yellow Ochre. I'm a little short on brown, so let me get that out there. Okay. And I think that's all I need to do. So I'm going to move these over out of the palette. Then I will get to brushes. Sorry for the inconvenience here, but we are now starting a new series, Boulder Canyon. This is going to be so much fun. I'm going to start with these um, uh, really soft brushes. These are uh, Rosemary um, Long Flats uh, Series 279. So they're kind of soft, pliable, almost look like the old Badger brushes. And they could be a badger, I'm not sure. I have an 8 and a 6, I think, here. I have a cadre of other brushes, but I'll explain those when I get into that. And I think I have an old standby. This must be left over. And that's my Cool Gray by Rembrandt. All right, so I take a good look up here at my, my representation here, my, my photo reference. And we're going to be starting things differently today by, instead of figuring out with uh, uh, where our shapes are going to be, we're going to start with uh, just some big dark values. What I mean by that is just stand by and I'll show you. So here's some blue and here's some brown. And boy, if you want to get to a quick dark, these two are really good. I might throw in a little yellow oak or two. A little bit more brown, a little bit more blue. All right. I think my darkest dark is going to be over here with this tree. All righty. So I'm going to get this uh, number eight, and I'm going to get some of my 
game saw in here and figure out where this big guy is going to be in here. little bit more yellow ochre to this mixture. Looks like I'm out of mixture already. So I'm using ultra blue, transparent brown, little yellow ochre. More blue, more brown. And that's going to go over in this area. Again, I'm putting it in very thin. You can see me, I just dipped into my Gamsol and Oop, that was not too good. And I think this one's more over here. And I might put a little bit of this lighter color into this mixture also. Kind of looks like trees. And I think I need this fella here and a few little guys. Now in that mixture, I'm going to throw in some gray. And as you can see, I haven't used any white so far. White's going to slow down this drying time, and I want this to dry quick. There's water. I know there's white in there from the rapids, and uh, we'll carve that out here in just a second. Now I'm going to switch to some different colors here in the block in. And one thing you'll start noticing about Gamsol, as you do with turpentine, turpentine is even quicker to dry. But it'll stink out your studio, freak out your students. And it's not good for you, it's breathing turpentine. But maybe outside it's not so bad. I'm going to go to a number six now. I changed this palette after taking a workshop with Mark Bogus. So he's a really good, good instructor. I highly recommend Mark Bogus for workshops through the uh, Scottsdale School of Art. All right, so let's go with a transparent oxide brown. I'm sorry, red, transparent oxide red. And a lot of white. Oh, why am I doing that? I said no white. I'm so used to my old palette here. Let's get that out of here. We're just gonna use um, the thinner to uh, lighten it. I'll show you what that means. So here's my th the thinner. And I think we have a thin it down. And I think there's an angle here to this. And I'll just lighten it by doing that. That's how you lighten this stuff. And that's all we need from that. 
And you see, I really try to control my palette. And uh, that is very important. Okay, next I think we need some sky, so let's just go with some cobalt, or don't have that. Why did I put white in there? Still used to my old way of painting. I'm introducing a new palette today. Okay, so I'm going to go to my brand new or I'm going to brush that I don't have any of these other colors involved with. Put a lot of turp in this thing and put in my, my blues. You're probably saying it looks like an abstract painting. Well, that's okay. And to lighten that, just get your rag and lighten it. And you see, when you're destroying the top of your trees, well, I can see that, but and then I'm going to soften some of these. It's kind of my Bob Ross. This is not a very expensive brush, just to soften some of these edges. And I'll dip that into my damn saw and clean it out. And for that, let's clean up my palette and wait for this to dry. Now, this stuff will dry pretty darn quick, but just to speed up and to show you that we are doing one take on this, let's take this out of the way and bring this in that I did yesterday. So it's should be pretty close to what we just did. Not as good as we did yesterday, but I think that'll do the trick. So, let me clean this one we just did off. Just using Gamsol and paper towel. And that'll be ready for the next demo. Okay, that takes care of that. Okay, with this now, it's time to excuse me for kicking the camera. Let me see if we're still in the right direction. Yep. And let's start with thicker paint now. So basically, we're getting into um, where these shapes are going to be. So with that, I'm going to get a smaller brush out of my pile here and I'll show you here in just a minute when I find it. I'm looking for something kind of small and soft. So this is a long flat 279 same series by Rosemary. You see it's just a smaller version of what we've been doing. And let's start with our darks. So let's go back to blues and browns. Maybe just a little bit of yellow ochre. And let's work on some of these shapes. Now, what I forgot to do is, what I did yesterday is, I went in here with my paper towel and carved in where these uh, rocks are going to be, just by doing strokes like this, you see. And I had a, some light spot up here where the water is the biggest rapids, and I just kind of cleaned it with my paper towel. Well now I'm going back to my blue and my brown. So this is my darkest dark. And I want to try to get that in soon to figure out where my darks are going to be. And then I'll put in my lightest light after I finish this work over here. 
on the left. It looks like I'm running out of product pretty quickly here. And there's my darkest dark. I'll probably have some more of that in here also. Let me tighten this down. There we go. And put some of that in down in here. Don't have much left, but just enough to kind of do that. And I'm cleaning out my brush and getting ready for it, my lightest light. I want to do those two things because I'm going to then decide every color I mix, my every value color I mix, which is color and value, is going to be in between my light and my dark. Now, I'm hoping that my previous color in my brush is not going to contaminate here. And it looks like up here in the rocks might be my lightest light or these really, really light greens behind here. But uh, let's just go with um, transparent oxide red. And a lot of white. And you can see that is a very, very light. I'm going to add a touch of orange in there. Just a touch. And that's going to be my lightest light is right up in there. I'll put it next to my dark to get a better sense of it. And I'll put that in right here. Just a little bit of camsole in there. And I'll put some over here so you can kind of see. Sometimes you can get a better sense if you put the light right up against the dark. And now I'm about running out of product. All right, so that's my lightest light. All right, where to go next, okay? All right, let's move down below. I have very little of this left. I don't even know if it's worth saving. Working on glass, so it's really easy to run up razor blade over it and keep it keep it nice and clean. I'm going to step back for a second and take a look at how my shapes are shaping up. And let's work next in uh, rocks. Alrighty. So with that, let's work with some grays. I'm working with cold gray. What I can see here, the background rock is lighter and the foreground rock here is darker. So I think basically every rock we paint here will be somewhere between the light and the dark in uh, the rock. So I'm going to go to the lower side of this and do some more gray. See, I have light to dark. And I'm going to add a little blue, ultra blue to it. That's about all I need. And 
I'm going to be brave and do something I probably shouldn't do, and that's just get some on the bottom of my my knife here. And I know there's need a lot more product. And I've got a shape of a rock now. I think he needs to be a little bit bigger. And I will go up there. I think there's another lipper, upper part of it, right up in there. I'm adding a little bit more blue and gray. And I'm going to put some of that on the bottom. Okay, now for my lightest light in the rocks. It kind of sticks, this guy sticks out right up over here. May have made him too big, but we'll see. And then I have some lighter guys off to the side. He's kind of a mixture, this fella over here. It's kind of a mixture between gray and light. And I'll put him in right here as a little darker. Now, these are pretty rough because I'm using a knife, and I will calm them down a little bit as we go forward. Okay, so now I got my light in the dark in the river, at least in with the rocks. And let's move on now to our next subject, which will be trees. These trees here. So what I see there is a dark and a light. Um, in, in here. When I look at my reference, I see, you know, the shadows as you go deeper into the tree, it's darker. And then the uh, fawns that are sticking out farther out are lighter. Let's go with the darker stuff and start that. So let's go with some blue. Transparent oxide brown. Ultra blue. Transparent oxide brown. I'm sorry. Transparent oxide red. Let's add a little bit of yellow ochre. Let me try that. It's got to have more blue to it. Darker, darker, and add just a touch of red, alizarin. I'm going to go back to uh, one of the brushes I used here just a little bit ago this uh, number six rosemary and I'm going to put him in a little darker. So, so I got some Gamsol in here so it's a little bit loose. You can see it's a little different than the stuff in front. And I want to be a little bit more careful of where my trees are going to be. And you can see I'm a little bit more careful of where things are going to be. This is a pretty tall tree right here. And I have some smaller guys in here. Now that rock's starting to show out a little bit more. 
Of course, I didn't make enough product, so we're going to go back to blue. Transparent oxide red. A little bit of yellow ochre. A little red. Make more mixture. Okay. Thin it down. Just a little. Not as much as I did before in the block end. I like the way these looser brushes make these under colors for big trees. I mean, it's really just... I see how I'm flipping the brush and just getting product, uh, product off both sides of the brush. And then there's another big tree right next to it. That might be a little out of place here. I might need a space in here. But it's dry. And let me get this guy on the far upper right. Again, I'm just using that flippy procedure here to Okay, now what I'd like to do is get more into the river. So I need to know where my rock placements are going to be. I have some over here and back in here. And I want to make sure I get that in before I start getting the darks in on the water. So again, I'm cleaning my palette to, just to stay in control of the chaos here. I mean, I appreciate people that can deal with the whole piles and mixtures everywhere. But for me, and what I recommend um, is to try, to try to keep a lot of mixing area so that you can make big mixtures. Okay, so this is going to take some a choice of looking for something that's got a nice straight edge on it maybe to help me with uh, rocks. And I think I can find it here in just a second, but I don't see it. So I'm going to use my uh, number six uh, Da Vinci, uh, this fella here. So it's got a pretty sharp edge on it. I wish I had a smaller version of it, and I do somewhere, but I can't locate it. Let me look in one more location. Nope. I'm sure I have a good sharp edge somewhere on some brush. Where would that be? I'm a looking. Oh, I might find something down here. I haven't forgot you all. I'm just looking. I need to find the right tool for the right thing here. You say, don't forget to finish the paint. I know that's object of this whole thing. And I'm going to use this uh, six rosemary long flat right here. That seems to be doing pretty good for me. So let's mix up a gray. So it goes from light, see how thoroughly I mix this, all right, and I've got some really good rocks right up in here, I'm going to add a little blue to the, just to darken it up just a little bit. put a series of rocks in this area. 
just to kind of say, I know where these rocks are going to be. I could probably do that better with my knife. So, I'm going to put this guy in with my knife right here. And then these guys under the tree are going to be a little lighter, I think. There's a big fellow right in here. And put more gray on the bottom of him. And so I'm, as you can see, I'm using some ultra and some gray and a little bit of white. And more rocks right in here. And I'll put a nice dark bottom on him. So I added some ultra here and there. I'll put some dark in here too. Okay, now I'm going to get these darks that are in the river here. So I'm going to go back to that flat I had, which is a number six rosemary. And I see that there's a dark rock here. There's a dark in the rock here. There's a dark right in here. Or mixture, blue, gray, <gasps> too much blue. I'm gonna add some white to this mixture. More gray. More white. And I see here this gray that comes out to here and has a defined dark. It's water's kind of going over a plateau of stone, and that's what this is. And of course, there's some real good darks over in here. Let me get some red in there now. Gray, blue, a little bit of red. And over here, I'm going to put in a little bit of green, so I add some yellow to this mixture. Maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. dark stuff over in here. And I know there's light on top of it, but we'll carve that out here a little bit. Okay, got some grays I need to put in here. Just a little bit of turp in here, or I mean of gimsel. And I need to get these darker colors in here on top of that plateau. I'm going to add some brown, transparent brown and blue. I mean, there is some dark in here. More blue. More blue. There is some dark in here. Blue. Add some red. Some brown. some really good darks over in here.
You know, I think I'm running out of time, and I want to thank you guys for coming in for, for block-in. And we're kind of getting into shapes and block-in now. And of course, a lot happened today. I introduced a number of new products here to you, and uh, as a result of a workshop I took. And uh, just trying out these um, different products here, and uh, brushes, and having a lot of fun. So. Anyway, let's get ready for tomorrow, part two. And today was just really came out really well for Boulder Creek. That's what uh, we did here today. And as you can see, control your palette. Okay. So that's what this is all about. Okay. So with that, let's bring uh, part one of Boulder Canyon to an end. Thanks so much for coming by, and I'll see you in part two. All right. Bye-bye.